Good evening, everybody. So let us start our lecture today. And today is September 9th. And uh, we are at the end of week 4. We are discussing linear time sorting algorithms, right? So, in our previous lecture, we discussed. Counting sort algorithm, right? We discuss only maybe only one thing. The counting sort algorithm actually that is the base <coughs> of many linear time sorting algorithms. So if you understand this, okay, if you understand this, then you are good to like uh, to do. <coughs> use radix sort algorithm because you see the radix sort algorithm it is <laughs> only one lines okay it says radix sort a and b okay b means the highest number of digits in a number we will come it here okay we will come it here quickly then you see that then one line for d equal to one two for i equal to 1 to d, use a stable sort algorithm like counting sort algorithm. So, <coughs> let me recap this as I uh, discussed this last week, but I will recap this quickly and then I will discuss some related or exceptional cases <coughs> with counting sort algorithm. But is there anyone here who are not present in last lecture? Everybody was here in last lecture. Mm -hmm. Then good. Okay, we don't need to spend too much time. But if if you are not present in last lecture, you can please watch my previous lecture video. Recorded, I uploaded in detail. Or you can watch, uh, watch in other sections recorded video. You see the book and my program. The program I gave you, right? The counting sort. Did I give you program for counting sort algorithm? Okay, the program and the book there is a different, little bit different because in the book it has index A is the input array and B is the output array. Those have index starting with 1. In pseudocode formats, starting in the an array index start with 1. But in program code, actual program code, we know that an array start with index 0, right? So actual program code is a little bit different here in this from line number 10 to 12 this last block and also this this algorithm it does not have one more part that copies b to a the final block that copies the value from b to a you can use it or you cannot use it okay but <coughs> so here are the indexes start with in this is start with one and so the last index in here it denotes the number of elements so we see that there are eight elements right but if index start with zero then the, the element will be number of in last index plus one okay and here so this is there are eight values and how did do we how did we find k the c the length of the counting array c K, we found K, K is the max element in the given array, right? We can find a max element by running a single for loop, that is linear time, right? Okay, so then the C array, its length, the C, you say it says 0 to K, okay, that means its size will be, <coughs> so 0 to K, say so 0 to K, that means its size actually is k plus 1. k here is 5, right? So, 0 to, 0 to 5 elements indices, that means its size actually k plus 1, right? Okay. Then initially we, oh initially we declared this counting array with k plus 1 size and then we initialize all the values with 0. Then the next step, line from 5 and 4 and 5, what did we do? We find, we 
we found we updated C with the number of occurrences of each key key values like 2, 5, 3, 0. These are the given key values. These are the values we are working with, right? Okay, it's in this uh, uh, in some point we are working with indices. Later we will see that in at some point we are working with given values. So we the book says keys or key values. That means the given numbers. Okay, so here C is updated with the number of, of occurrences of each of these key in distinct key values. So it says 0, 2, that means we found 0, 2 times. 0 is found here, 0 is found here 2 times, 1 and 1 and this. Okay, and 1 is found no time, there is no 1. But still, we have to get the index. Okay, and then 2 is found 2 times, 3 is found 3 times, and 4 is found no times, or 0 time, and 5 is found one time. So this part was easy, right? We can run a single for loop and then we can calculate it. Okay. This algorithm could have been done here. It, it could be completed here. The algorithm could be completed here if our, this could be done. It's very simple, right? If these are just, the keys are just values, integer values, nothing else. Yeah. Like the two, f three, five. These are the numbers. We have given a set of numbers and asked to sort it. Then it is easy. By looking this, see now we can see that there are g there there are zero two times one no time, two two times three three times. And then so we can finally easily say zero zero two two three 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 five. But uh, this algorithm is developed is called mm, uh, is called not in place there is a good term mm, I forgot it is called stable sort okay stable sort means this value may not be these values may not be only values these values key values may not be only key values it may be associated with something else for instance this zero zero that means this may be this this data may come from another data set that has associated other other things for instance if it is a, an insurance company what an insurance company record Okay, that means says that zero means zero tickets. Okay, and zero means zero ticket, two tickets, two tickets, and this three tickets, three tickets, three tickets, and five tickets. Okay, like for instance, this this zone has zero ticket, and this is maybe this is me, I have a zero ticket. Okay, and something like this. Okay, this is maybe John. Okay, and this is me. So, <coughs> maybe think about a situation that company may decide to give some discount for the people who do not have any ticket or who have and less than three tickets or le less than five tickets at a certain time. Okay, <coughs> so these are the people that who have, these are the, for instance, part of the database, part of the record. But in case, if the company says, okay, so we have limited number of scope, so we will give discount to people who applies first, first come, first service, okay? Then this person will be given, okay? Will given priority, maybe he, he came before me, he applied before me. In this kind of situation, right? So this zero is not only a zero. These values are not independent. These are dependent with some other facts. Okay. In that case, we need a stable algorithm. 
stable algorithm means in this set in the given data set this zero came first so this zero in output this will be the zero this is john's record okay and this is my record i applied i came later so my record will go in this one so then it it will maintain stability similarly for this one this three will be this three and this three will be this three and this three will be this three even when in the original array they are maintaining a an order in the sorted array they are also maintaining order in which they can in okay in that case we need to do something more okay and that is the fact is called stable algorithm and in order to make stability <coughs> in order to make stability we need these extra works from 6 to 12 these two things we need right so then then we discussed the seven line number seven and eight what did they do in seven and eight they did a cumulative sum they updated c with cumulative sum start with, with index one you don't need to start with zero with index one and then what it will do this index one value with index one will be updated by is adding its previous value so then this value <coughs> you see that this one for i equal to 1 to k what is k here your max element right 5 here k will be 5 over here so here as k is 5 so then c i equal to c i plus c i minus 1 that means this is our c i first one i equal to 1 so then uh, this one will be updated as sum of its previous value Okay, so that means this one, this one will be two. I'm sorry, this is okay. I need thickness. So this one will be adding up here. So this value will be two, and this value will be all sum of previous. Then two plus two four. Okay, four. This value will be four. So here, this value at two is four, and then this value will be. It's easy. Just add all of the previous numbers. Four plus three is seven, and this value will be seven plus zero, seven, and this value will be seven plus one equal to eight. This is the thing. Two two. So the first one is as is. 224778 224778 right and <coughs> and these the previous the or this the original initial this one this says how many times each of the key values are it says zero is two times one is no time two is two times five is one time right but this what does this say this tells us if there exists a zero. This tells us if there exists a zero, okay, the last zero will be at position two, in the final array. The last value, last. If there is a zero, or if there are multiple zeros, the last value of zero will be at position two. So in the array, we say the index zero is position one, right? This is first position, this is second position, third position, fifth position. So zero, first zero is position at two. So first zero is to start at position two. Okay. Sorry, first not first last zero. I missed, don't. 
last zero is at position two, and if there is a one, then that position is also two. So if there is no one, so that is not here. So since there are two, same number, and if there is a two, then the last two will be. There is one or more twos. The last two will be at four. So you see that last two at four. And if there is a three, if there is three, then last three will be at position seven. You see the last will be at position seven. And if there is is a four, then then still that will be at seven. So it's in the you know four. Okay, but there is logic behind here also. So you can say that if these are two numbers same, then we can say that the last number does not exist. Okay, if there is a five, that position will be at eight. The five is position at eight. Huh? So intuitively, if we understand what does this this mean, then we can write. It. Then we can draw it. Okay. So this calculation is a little bit tricky. So that like so, these things. <coughs> so we we have learned this right. The cumulative sum. These are done. And nine number ten to twelve. These are the critic. Is is something is difficult. And the difficulty actually I, I noticed that I realized that the difficulty comes. The reason that in our program. We have uh, in we we work with index zero. So far, I remember I uh, when I was student, I took algorithm course. I I read the book from McGraw-Hill book. So McGraw-Hill maybe that uh, I cannot remember. It's long time ago. <coughs> or so far, when when you understood this, I understood with actual real program. Okay, so but here see there is a mix. In this book, there is a mix of indices. You start with zero, C start with zero, and this does start with one. Okay, I realize that there is a good thing. Uh, maybe the authors have a uh, different idea in their mind. So they they thought that it's, it's easy to explain. Now when we get this, what is the last two lines? These three lines, last three lines do. So it is. Coming from from j equal to a dot length down to one, that means it is starting from last. Okay, and it is starting from from a dot length will be eight, right? Okay, and this says a j. That means a eight is equal to three. Right over here. Let me write it down again. So a j, the value a j. Will be three, so the A J will go where C C B C A. There is something here. First of all, so inner it it works with inner bracket, so it will get A J equal to three, right? So then what will say then C three? Now it will come to the counting at C three position. Okay, what is seven? Right. Okay. And then it comes B seven. So then B seven. Now it goes to B seven. Or B seven here. You say B seven. So these three now here we are getting <coughs> something like this. A J. Equal to eight, so we are getting not this much. This three. I'm taking this three and going to this three, the position three. Still, I have to a position three. Okay, at position three, I'm getting seven. 
and this seven okay then I'm going going to going to plus seven you remember that these keys are going to I'm uh, uh, noting index this key values is 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 going to index and again this key values will go to this index okay same index seven will go to seven and then at this point this three will go If you can write it, you can draw something like this, then we will never forget. In a book, or somewhere, you, you please draw something like this, okay? So this one, first one, it will come here, one. Then second one is two. Okay, and this one is three. Okay, and not done yet. <laughs> one more thing that after you do this you need to reduce this value by one because the next time when it comes here it will tell us if there is more three okay the last three will be at position seven six seven minus one six at last position will be another if there is another if there is another three then that three will go at position seven 7 minus 1 because we uh, every first time it goes 7 the next time it go one place behind uh, the, uh, earlier left okay you can take a picture or you can write draw this way okay and the last one it will come with this six seven this seven will be reduced to so this is why what it is shown over here it's shown over here so then shown over here seven is previously it was seven right now it is six okay when one iteration is done then the loop will go this this one okay so what this this will do i'm using different color so this seven this zero will go where it will go index zero right and then it will take this value two two will go at position at index over here at index over here let me this they use this this one so these two oh, i'm sorry and if i could draw nice and then <coughs> right <coughs> and then this value will come this position so this is my first this is second and this is third and then at this point after this which value will be changed so we have to come from here right <coughs> at position where is was the position this is zero right it was denoting at position two No, sorry here. Oh, I'm sorry. I could, I could denote here. I was supposed to. I was supposed to use the last. Last. Let me draw it here because then there will not be not no confusion. Not here. So it will use the updated. Otherwise, it will use the updated 
0 this 0 this 0 and this 2 so this is 1 and this is 2 and this is 3 and then after that this value will be subtracted reduced to 1 so that is the reduced one so here you see that one over here okay. you can remember that the one flow is going down so it is reducing by one that's it if you remember this way then you will be able to read okay so as i said that this algorithm could have been very small if just if we are asked to write an algorithm to sort the numeric numbers some kind of this kind of interview question if you go for job interviews sometimes they will ask this kind of question write a linear time sorting algorithm they are just given some numbers the number are not associated with anything else then we could have only a few lines right and then we can add a few more lines over here to do this okay <coughs> but here in order to maintain stability we have to do more right but this algorithm is, is it has running time now let us <coughs> analyze this algorithm so you see that its running time will be tn will be in this phase okay there is one for loop right now the theta of n okay and then here it is theta of a dot length equal to k right this is k plus theta of k plus here is theta of k that means plus theta of k and plus here is also length theta of uh, I'm sorry I did a mistake this first one is k this one is n first one is k first one is theta k this for this one is theta and this one is n this is n and this is this is k plus last one is theta of n right this one is sorry theta of 2k plus 2n we can re get rid of 2k 2k plus n okay equal to theta of you can say n plus k or k plus n that's fine it is the time complexity for this algorithm. Okay. Yes. This one? Yeah. So this one I'm looking for this one. This one is theta of k. This one is theta of n. So now this one is theta of k. And this one is theta of n. This one is theta of n. Yeah. <coughs> so ultimately, we got theta of n plus k, right? So here, which one is dominant part? Now the question is that n or k, which one is has more force on the algorithm? Okay. In that case, we assume in general we assume n, in precise, because we are we are we always find the complexity in terms of n, right? Left side in terms of n for an algorithm, but so so it ends uh, apparently it ends, but k mid may be n n may not be dominant. Think about a data set like this. 
So, can you please tell me what are the data values? Just let me repeat this. A. What are the data values? Tell me the data values. A. Two. two five. Five. Zero. Zero. Two. Three. Zero. Three. Zero. Three. Zero. And zero. Zero. Okay. The last one. Maybe it is not three. It can have been like this. Three hundred thousand. Right? So n over here is 8, right? n is 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. How many data values? n equal to 8, right? But k equal to 300,000. Okay, so k is long, right? Here k is dominant, right? So in that case, what will be the issue? The c array will be the c array will be 0 to k right the c array will be will have 0 to k and there are many places so here for the 0 tell me the numbers please first one okay what is the number 2 right the second one 1 2 3 4 5 6, 7, 8, 9, da, 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 this one. Okay, that, what is that, this one? This one? 1 is 0. Right? 0. And the third one? It was 2, right? 2. And this one? 3. And this one? 0. This one? 1. No, 7. I see. Oh no, one, right? One. Okay. And then six, zero. Seven, zero. All the way zero, 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 zero. And that is one. Yes. I just want to point out because you replaced the last three in the original A with the. Any value. It should not be. It, it, it need not to be the last three. Well, oh, so, so then then this one will be two, right? That's what I said. Oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. This one will be two, not three. Okay. <coughs> so in that case, that modified C will be. Help me, please. We want to find the modified C, updated C. The updated C will be something. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, da, da, da. 300,000, right? Last one. And then this value will be Okay, so this value will be this one is 2, right? And this one will be 2 plus 0 equal to 2. This one will be 2 plus 2 4. This one will be 6. This one will be 6. This one will be Seven, and this one will be seven, 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 all the way seven, until the last value will be eight. Right. So our concern is about this. The places from this. this from index 8 to 29 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 
this first position, last position. All of these have same previous value, right? But still, we need to run in order to get the cumulative sum. We need to run this, complete this loop, right? And we have to go here. So, so we have to go again, see all the way in, right? So that will take time. Okay. So that is a drawback in case if there is out layer, if we can set out layer, right, the very large value, extreme value, single extreme value, one or two. If there is one or two extreme values, so this, in that case, this uh, program algorithm is not feasible. Okay. Now, I want to give you some class, maybe you are at homework, to do some research or think at least. What will be a possible solution to solve, to modify this algorithm so that it works with an outlet? For instance, if I have given this data set with one extreme values, 300,000, right? How can we solve this problem? Okay. And how can we modify this algorithm to fit in counting such algorithm to make it better? Is there anything in mind? No, we don't want. We want still. We want to use this function. So we have to do some some. Maybe extra thing. That one can do that. We can keep the outlet aside. We can um, take that outlet value, maybe some variable, right? And sort the other part of the algorithm. And then when it's sorting is done, we can include the outlet variable as well. Okay. It could be, yes, it came to my mind. But this could be a solution, but you may think otherwise. This is how people are thinking to develop better algorithms. Mm -hmm. Okay? They think they, they have an existing algorithm. If there is an issue, a possible issue, they think how to solve make this better. How to resolve that possible case. Okay? That's case one. In case of outlier. Okay, another case. <laughs> there may be some negative values. So this algorithm works better or works good with only positive values. Okay, all of these positive values. Because the reason is that these values are later associated with index, right? Mm -hmm. Index values. So an index and array index cannot be negative. Then how to solve if I have an, an array, in case two, with one element, let's consider the one element better than most, negative. For instance, if I may have negative three, only one element three, negative three, and all of this positive. So only for one element negative, should I discard this algorithm? Or is there any way that we can do to solve this problem? OK. So this is case one case one with an outlier. Okay. And case two case two if there is a negative element. For instance, one of these keys is negative. And what can I, can I do? Example, 2, 3, 5, 0, 7, minus 8. Can we apply, still apply? Yes, we can apply. But think about it in an alternative way. How can we do that? Someone told me in the in last, last lecture. How was that? Then one thing, 
you can do that with the negative element we can add negative 8 is issue here right we can add negative 8 to increase all elements by negative 8 by 8 right so then all that this one will be 10 this one will be 11 this one will be 13 this one will be 8 this one will be 15 and this one will be 0 right and then sort those for those numbers and at the end we can subtract make that number 8 from all elements Mm, uh, I, I don't think that will work because if me I have a positive value 8 yeah. and a negative 8 <laughs> will that work <laughs> no it will not work yeah. but adding 8 it will, it will work right it seems to me it seems to me work okay and case 3 <coughs> Okay, case 3, it does not work with decimal value. Work with <coughs> decimal. Decimal key values. if there is a solution for this if all the numbers are distinct I don't know I did not find any feasible solution <laughs> we'll just think about it if we can find an alternative way to apply this with decimal numbers but we're lucky that we have an algorithm that we can work for decimal numbers. Okay, so now let us go to the let's go next. Is everybody okay? Does anyone has any question? Okay, this week there is no uh, nothing due, but I like you to study. Okay, please read the book, and then you, you read the book, then you will learn something. Every time I read read some pages from the I learn something, or I recall something. Okay, so there is another <coughs> algorithm, stereotic sort algorithm that works for decimal numbers, decimal digits. Okay, decimal for decimal numbers, or it will work for even for decimal values. Okay, so this stereotic sort algorithm, so it works both decimal numbers and it works both. And the short algorithm, it works for decimal numbers, and especially it works for decimal decimal values. It takes less time. Okay, the concept is very simple. As long as you know the counting sort algorithm, okay, and then what it will do? For instance, here these are the data values. Okay, here D will be how many for the more for the for the largest number, how many digits are there? Three digits, right? Here in this case, all numbers have three digits. Okay, but uh, some numbers could have two digits or one digit, right? But we can align them and then make same digits, right? We can get zero zero. If there is a nine only, we can say zero zero nine, right? If twenty nine, then we can say zero two nine. 
then all we will have three digits. Okay, shifting is easy. Okay, and then we all so the d value is three over here. D is the number of digits for the, in the largest number. Okay, there's three digit numbers. So now we can apply. Remainder method, right? Remainder to get the lowest digit. If we divide, if we divide this number, uh, each number by ten, mm -hmm. and get the remainder, uh, then, then we will get the right digit, right? Seven, so nine, seven, 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 seven six. Then in the first iteration, what we will do, we will check, go through which one is the lowest last digit. This one, right? 720, right? Then this 720, seven twenty. we are considering only the last digit. We are not looking for the upper digits, okay? Higher order, higher value digits. We are 720, we'll go here, 720. And then in the next phase, okay, 720, then first. Then what will be given, what is the next number? Greater than zero, we'll come back from here. Then it is five, right? Then three, five, five will go here. And then it will see, it will come back again. And then what is the next number? Six. Then 436 will come here. And in this way, that you see that in the, after the first iteration, this number will be sorted. It's not done yet. Based on the highest digit, the last digit, so lowest digit. So zero five six seven seven nine nine. We are looking only the right digit, not the higher order digit. Okay. Now, <coughs> in that case, by keeping the other other higher digit unchanged, now we can we will look for this this digit. How can I get this second digit? By dividing again by ten, right? Or by dividing by 100, right? You can get, um, by dividing again 10. What do we got the remainder? So then if we if we divide 10 by 10, then we will get 72. And then take the remainder, then we will get two. And then two, five, five, three, <coughs> five, five, two, three, right? And then first one, we are not looking the right digit first, it, this time. This is already done. Okay, then the two, this number will come first. Then it will go in, and then 329 it will come. Because of the 2, not 9. Okay, at this point, we are not looking the right digit. This least significant. We are looking the middle digit, OK? And then by looking then, then 4, then again 3, 436 will come over here. It is not changing order, but it's OK, whatever is OK. <coughs> After that, the third iteration, OK, we are looking for this, only the highest in the, these three, these values. Right? We can get these values. So then the lowest one is coming 3. So then this one will become 329, this one 329, then this one 355. And then this one is come 436, 436, and then 457. After the third iteration, you see that all numbers are sorted. Okay. It will also work if there is a negative number. Still, it will work. Okay. So that algorithm, you just need to use stable sort, OK? We know that counting sort is a stable sort algorithm. OK. Then we have one more algorithm that is called bucket sort algorithm. Bucket means there will be multiple buckets. For decimal numbers, we can have 10 buckets. The ten digits for 
how many buzz buckets you will be using that depends on the situation okay and it, it works also for negative for also for negative numbers and then for for decimal numbers okay and here for instance for this kind of numbers if you are given a some decimal numbers and we know the digits from 0 to 9 right so then we can have 10 10 buckets 10 buckets the 0 all numbers that has 0 will come over here okay so <coughs> Now this this is another thing is that we need to hear we need to if there are multiple numbers we need to maintain another data structure over here like a linked list. Okay, I wanna quit early a few minutes early today. So this is the bucket sort algorithm. Okay, and the bucket sort algorithms you can usually they use insertion sort algorithms insertion sort algorithm in order to sort the, the last the, these these values okay so in order to sort these values if we internally use another uh, insertion sort because this number will be will be a few repeated numbers so if you have a large very large number like one third so if they are evenly distributed Still, there will be one tenth, right? If there are there are one thousand numbers, it is assumed that if they are evenly distributed, then one bucket will get one tenth of the numbers. But usually, it does not happen that those numbers will be evenly distributed. Okay. <coughs> so this is the bucket sort algorithm. It is not hard. So please go through this and then if you do not understand in our next lecture i will discuss this okay but i have now the few minutes i want to spend to give you some programs that i like you to practice uh, did i give you in the last lecture did i give you uh, counting sort algorithm then that is sort this sort algorithm <coughs> this is the radius sort algorithm and this is that in internally it uses counting sort algorithm yes uh, what are the time complexities of gradients and bucket sorts theta n in the worst case And then, in one case, it says theta n, but in one case, since it uses insertion sort algorithm, that takes n squared. But in the in the very very worst case, if all numbers fall into one bucket, so say all numbers start with point 0.1, okay, then there is a technique. We will go to the next. For instance, if you are given all numbers, they start with 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 something, 0, 0, 0, something, 0, 0, 0, something, 0, 0, 0, something. In that case, okay, so internally, if you use this bucket, then all will come in one, one bucket, right? So in <laughs> that case, it will not work that much. That is expected. But for randomly distributed, Okay, and the average case, it is said that big O n. Okay, a good question though. So you can you can uh, uh, go through this discussion. How this why this is n, uh, n. This is the discussion why the running time of this. Okay, I will go through this maybe in the next lecture if you need it. Then I want to give you this 
how can it be real? In the teens, right? Yeah, this is algorithm. When we run it, it will work. But your task is to make some changes so that it works in descending order. It is displaying in ascending order. You can display in descending order. Okay. And you see that how we are getting the digit, the I mean, the bloody digit. Okay, then. Then back it's out. If there are negative numbers, it is good. Will work. <laughs> so they're working that this is negative number, the negative numbers. Mm -hmm. work. So you see the backer sort algorithms implementation right here. So this week there is nothing due, but next week there will be uh, a quiz and an assignment. So the quiz will be on all sorting algorithms. You need to read book or whenever you uh, study, you take the quiz, you can search from the keyword from the book and then the quiz may be a little bit tricky. Okay, because sorting algorithms are cover all over since your CS1, right? The first course in tech programming is, is learn sorting algorithms and then other courses, 1322 and data structure course and then this course. So that, <laughs> that quizzes will be a little bit harder, okay? And be prepared. But if you read the book and if you follow it, our lecture then you should be good. Does anyone have any question? Yeah. Um, are you gonna open up the uh, what was the last quiz? Last? Yeah, last quiz? Yeah. So um, I discussed one day. Isn't this not in, in your section? I discuss in one section. It's, it was not your section, right? I don't think so. I was asking if it was your previous section. The last thing you did. Because my click is a, a demo. And it doesn't show it like the second one. Let me finish. <laughs> 